Well, Batman, basically you messed up. You let five people die. <laughs> Shoe Nice 22, a man you've probably seen by now on the internet. He'd been known to eat some weird stuff, okay? That's obvious. He's sort of like the Mr. Beast of the eating community and that his mission statement has been to change the world and feed the homeless. My mom told me that someday, Chris, you're gonna save the world and she knew it too, because that's what I'm gonna do. And as a method and medium to reach his goals, Mr. Shu decided to eat stuff. Lots and lots of stuff. Disgusting stuff, sick stuff, terrifying stuff, horrible stuff. And as you could probably tell by most of this footage, it's all old. Where has Shoe Nice been? What has he been up to? Where is he now? You may have even seen the Sunny V2 video on him. Shoe Nice, also known as Christopher Shuey, the self-proclaimed human garbage disposal. Or the plethora of other videos calling him a scammer. Well, I've had sort of like beef with Shoe Nice for a while now, but not really. He hates me and he loves me at the same time because I made a video on him. Hey, Oompaville, Shoe Nice again. You better change that title, dude. I'm gonna report you, dude. If you don't think I can't give you a strike, then don't change the S to a B because I ain't the saddest, I'm the baddest. For a while, I've been asking and petitioning to get an interview, a la Andrew Tate style, because <laughs> that went so well. Uh, how often do you off. I can stay here. And I wanted to ask the source about all this information flooding around and see what Shoe Nice has been up to. And I got him. I got him. I interviewed Shoe Nice 22. Crazy. Thank you to Upside for sponsoring this video. I spend a lot of money on my Don't Laugh series. Over $20,000 thus far to you guys. I am also very poor. Today, there's an upside to it though. <laughs> Upside is an app that will help you get cash back from daily purchases. Upside is partnered with a ton of businesses across the United States. And how it works is you open the app and then you claim an offer for whatever you're buying, food, gas, groceries, etc. You can check in on the app, pay as usual, and boom, you get money back. That money appears in your account and you can cash out at any time with PayPal, an e-gift card on Amazon, whatever. It's around three times more effective than most cash back programs, even like cash back for credit cards, which is basically the reason that I use credit cards is for cash back. So this is a huge deal. And if you share with your friends, you can get even more money back. Sharing with a friend can get them 15 cents off a gallon of gas, as well as a one-time 15 cent off for you. And you earn one cent per gallon of gas that they buy forever, which is awesome because people buy a lot of gas. In all honesty too, it seems like a too good to be true thing, but this is just how the financial world works now in this age. It's possible to get cash back by working in a system where there's great relationships between businesses and upside happens to be one. I've been using it a lot for a little bit over two months now, and I absolutely love it. I like buying groceries and getting money back because I feel like there's a lot of wasted money there. Sometimes I don't eat all my strawberries, my blueberries, etc. Give me my money back! Help hedge yourself against inflation just a little bit better with upside, whatever. Get cash back, why not? Upside has to be used with a credit or debit card. Click the link in the description to download the free Upside app at upside.app.link forward slash Oompa to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Just for clarity's sake too, one of the very first YouTubers I watched was you. One of the very first people on YouTube I watched, me and my, uh, my best friend Wyatt used to watch you. Hey everyone, Mark Simpson again. Well basically I just, I'm a mess. I'm a complete mess. I mean, that was a long, long, long time ago, and there's so much, there's so much shoey, shoe nice lore. A lot of people think I'm a complete idiot, but actually I'm a professional idiot with decades of experience. It goes back forever. I started December 8, 2010. Although this screenshot says differently. So you've been, you've been like relevant in some aspect or another for a very long time, and you've had so many different social media handles do you know how many accounts that have been deleted or that have you deleted? Because I saw you on TikTok, I mean, you have like five accounts or four accounts, something like that. Well, basically, um, I was always that crazy entertainer from fifth grade art class all the way up through high school and the yeah. army and everything else. I got out of the Gulf War and I went back to roofing and I just roofed forever. But everybody always said, you're just an entertainer, dude. What are you doing roofing? Look at your nice smile. 
And I was like, damn, that was roofers that told me that. So I fell through a skylight, broke seven vertebrae, you know, had to come back out of that with, you know, an opiate addiction. And I joined YouTube. So I was just sitting there and I started eating toilet paper and yeah. everything else. And it just all blew up. The new SpongeBob movie's PG. Probably because they show ass cheeks. And I guess I was my own worst enemy getting into the troll game. So, I mean, everybody just started maliciously reporting me, you know? And if you have enough people, you can shut down a Twitter. You can shut down an Instagram. You can shut down everything. So I'm going to guess starting over from everywhere, from Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. I lost like 2 million people. He claims he has lost a combined 2 million followers or subscribers due to his constant bans on social media platforms, but there's not really a way to fact check this claim, but it is something that he says. Now you see, YouTube had an algorithm where if everybody reported, just like TikTok has today, <laughs> the algorithm picks it up and they shut you down and you yeah. have to find a human being to say okay that channel you know is a legit that didn't happen with me because of logan paul you know logan paul went to the japanese super forest i think there's someone hanging right there and then youtube changed the next day and 2000 channels including mine got shut down how many subs did you have at that point Six hundred and sixty-seven thousand. okay but it was big seven years ago <laughs> and youtube says we're sorry you cannot get your creations back and a dj from a radio station just bought all my videos off of google this year it's just crazy. How many videos did you have that were deleted, you think? It's 650, you said. I uploaded probably close to 10,000 videos. I was a troll. Yeah. And I used to upload like 100 videos on a Sunday morning. <laughs> You'd say, how's your pee doing? Now, he said this almost exact same thing on PKA, another podcast, but just slightly different. He said he would post 80 videos in two days. Yeah, it's about, uh, I'd say it's about um, 85 in two days. One thing I did notice up until this point and over the span of the interview is I don't really understand fully how people call him a compulsive liar. He seems to be fairly spot on with the things that he reiterates. To have basically the same story six years apart is impressive. I just wanted to see how many people I could get to unsub for me. But I had stopped that and the Tide Pods came around with Logan Paul and then the CEO of YouTube just said, we're going to change things, you know? Right. I did a Tide Pods parody telling kids not to eat the Tide Pod, but they were just looking at Tide Pod titles. Yeah. And I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back. But you can't break a camel's back with a piece of straw. Yeah, that's bullshit. I've always thought that uh, that saying was absolute horseshit. So you almost left YouTube and- uh, Hold on, bro. I just got out of an AA meeting. Let me get a sip. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, no. Are, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Give me a river. Yeah, no worries. So you have a relationship with Barstool some form or another. You, you almost left YouTube totally. They kind of helped you kind of stay on the track to, to come back. What do you have planned for the future? What, you, no, they didn't. Nah, they didn't help me come back. I always upload a video saying I'm quitting YouTube because I love to feed the haters. You're just trolling, okay. Than anything else right yeah. now. Here I wasn't sure if I was being punked or trolled or or what exactly. Shunai seems to have trouble turning off his troll instincts. So trying to figure out if he's being genuine or just trolling me is a tricky needle to thread. I've known Barstool Sports since they first started. We were all together. They would share my videos like World Star Hip Hop, Lively, yeah. Crack. I've seen a lot of comments, a lot of old buddies, a lot of old haters coming back saying hi or self. Either way, a lot of the comments were get with the times, do a tie pod, please. Is this Live Week or Chuck E. Cheese? Because that's where you get out there. 
You know, you don't get out there from just making YouTube videos. You have to get that syndication. Yep, in the mainstream. Tosh said, you were the funniest dude we've ever had in the studio. I slept here last night, but it's comfortable as a mofo. <laughs> that man with the dreamy blue eyes of Zac Efron and the diet of a goat is known as Shoe Nice. If ever there was someone perfectly suited to be homeless, it's a dude who eats garbage on the red. It's that syndication that keeps you alive. Like right. me talking to you right now, dude. What an honor. Hey, Daniel, come on in. What's up, Shoe Nice? How you doing, Daniel? Got you a housewarming gift? It's a cake? What kind? Urinal? Oh, you know me so well, Daniel. What do you have planned for the future now that you're you're you've you've hit, you're Nothing. you're feeding the trolls? You know, it, I I just went on a chaos roller coaster ride for the first ten years on YouTube. I fed into that troll game. I got haters that are just evil, and I just I don't know. It doesn't pay to be a troll. You got to be that family friendly. Mm -hmm. Everybody watches you. But just the overall status of how I've controlled people's lives, just eating toilet paper and glue on YouTube, it's just like, get over me. This dude got debunked off of Sunny V2 and Internet AJ. And I know this because he scammed me out of money for a bunch of thumbnails that I made for his channel. They hate me so much that they made the rise and fall mm -hmm. of now this guy got debunked and know what Sun EV2 says? Dude, I'm giving you publicity. I don't care about the truth. When he said that AJ and Sonny had been debunked, I wasn't exactly sure what he meant by that in the moment. I'm not sure if he was talking about the Tom Dark video destroying Internet AJ, who is as sus as a character from Among Us. It was truly more sus than a character from Among Us. Or all of the responses to Sunny V2 from the people who he's made videos about. I mean, I'm just eating toilet paper trying to make people laugh, but somehow, some way, bro, I get under people's skin, tear out their emotions, and send them back to sleep at night. Hey, yo, donate, he ain't donating shit, because I'm sleeping out on the side of a fucking mall. I f yeah, you didn't have to do that, you didn't have to do that. I didn't have to do what? Entertain you fuckers? So yeah, that, that was kind of leads into my next question, which was, uh, how do you feel about the Sunny V2 video? A lot of people, the first thing of you that they will see, a lot of younger folk will be that video. Nothing has ever been proven, but there's one video that's been put on the internet, which sounds very legit. Sunny V2 interviewed the actual predator. A guy by the name of Dean, who was good friends with Shoe Nice back in the day, has stories of Shoe Nice fleeing Florida to come to Denver to escape a relationship with a 15 year old girl named Ellie. I'll just play the clips and let you draw your own. The guy, the guy guy that he was interviewing is yeah. the one that stopped this lady now she already came out on tiktok admitted everything about this guy he didn't want to date the mom he actually wanted to date her daughter however the girl ellie actually made a video saying that this guy is just trying to take down shoe nice and that shoe nice did nothing wrong hello this is ellie shoe nice's fans anti-fans i don't give a fuck who you are but shoe nice is innocent now you can see all the scams and blah blah blah. I never scammed a soul in my life. Now we didn't stay on this topic for too long because it was quite early in the interview and I didn't want to scare him off, all right? Because I have respect for the man, you know? He took his time out of his day for me. All I try to do is help the homeless, help the needy. I fed more homeless people in a year than all my haters will do in a lifetime. Not only did he just blatantly say, I'm not going to pay you, he also sent me a bunch of abusive messages for no apparent reason. He also accused me of scamming him. And then later on, he made up a long fake story to try and trick me into making more thumbnails for him. Put some clothes on, Marge. Up yours. Sorry. A little, little, uh, little Simpsons uh, oh, time cool. warp there. A little Marge <laughs> broke into your reality for a moment. It happens. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, the Indian cab driver from Deadpool here. Today, I'm going to be talking about Shoe Nice. Internet of Jay, who is as sus as an Among Us character, and Sunny V2, you feel that you were rep misrepresented in those videos, but do you think that any of the criticism that they gave or the, the points that were that they tried to make in those videos, do you think any of them were valid? Not at all. The truth is that Shoe Nice has always been quite troubled. 
He clearly had a difficult upbringing and was exposed to the disease that is alcoholism. But yes, I do think that Shoe Nice has always been this total piece of garbage that is seen in the editing scam video. Why do I say this? Because there are examples of Shoe Nice being a scumbag at every point in the timeline. Not Vice, not Tosh.0, none of them have gotten it right except you, bro. Because they were just out for vengeance. They never asked me my opinion. How are you going right. to do a rise and fall of somebody's kid without asking them? Hearing him talk so negatively about all these people that he seemingly enjoyed talking with at the time, he even referred to Ethan as a brother. I'm kind of betting that I'm going to get hate mobbed by the shoe nice army after this i'm not totally sure i still think he's been incredibly nice to me i still have a great amount of respect for him hopefully he enjoys this video hi chris how you doing i just hope that it's not one of those you know uh crazy flips if you know the truth inside your soul who cares what people say i'm all about the britney spears ride i get you Do, would you consider yourself like the britney spears of youtube oh without a doubt you know the family don't talk to me then I'm still making money. <laughs> yeah, dude. Do you sing? Do you ever sing? I did it again. Yeah, there you go. I have a question. So this is this one's interesting because I, I watched the whole uh, when, when you were when you were affiliated with uh, H3. Hold you, on, bro. I'm doing the 12 steps of AA. One beer at a time. <laughs> okay. At one point, you you considered you said that Ethan was a friend, right? Ethan from H3H3. H3. And then after all that stuff went down, he goes, Ethan and Ella, stop talking about me you always clickbait me and it always gets you more views well it's bullshit and it's time to stop talking about me get your name out of my mouth before i and then he starts uh he starts threatening me he goes ethan you're a f and if i see you i'm gonna do something you know violent he said and he goes i'm just kidding i scared you didn't i ethan you put you, you think he's a loser now you said he's a loser do you still think he's a loser is it just to feed the trolls <laughs> He's a loser in his own mind. He used to be H3 Productions, you know, hanging out with Filthy Frank and his bunnies. I've got one dollar, and I got a guy here who I think needs it a little more than me. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. How you doing? What the fuck is this? You think he fell off? I'm just going to say that he should have never made that video making fun of me feeding the homeless. I'm starting a new campaign on my YouTube channel. It's called Buy a McDouble for a Homeless Person. I got a half a million subscribers, so if everybody does it, a half a million people will get fed for a second. For a second. I appreciate I appreciate the realism he injects in this. For a second. Am I the asshole? Yeah, probably. Are they the asshole? Yeah. Where does that leave you? I don't know. Fuck off. It's the end of the video. Is, it, is that still your goal? Is to feed the homeless? Is that is that your... Uh... Yeah, dude. I could never be a millionaire. I feel greedy. I just... It's weird. I just always just help out people. Even if it's just a few dollars, who cares if they're doing math? They want a burger and they're just... True. You know, yeah. they, they're just helping that human being for an hour. Day. All right, man, I'm gonna throw this up on YouTube. I'm gonna get you some push. So would you consider yourself having any feuds with any YouTubers actively? Like, like I feel like sometimes we are feuding. It seems like an all good fun. The audience seems to enjoy it. First things first, his main job seems to be cameo. I'm going to buy a cameo and he's gonna be in my video, all right? Hey, Caleb, shoe nice again. I'm a bit of a troll myself. You're a bit of a troll. Well, basically I heard that you lost $20,000 in Doge. Is it Doge or Dodge? Either way, bro, that's called the cycle of life. There's ups and downs, bumps and bruises, and we learn from our mistakes. We learn from our errors and we move on. And it's just material things, bro. What's important is your health, happiness, and that you're a good friend to shoe nice. Either way, bro. Marge Simpson, do you have anything to say? I'm sorry. Clean the house now. You're going to be all right, dude. Do you, would you consider us to be feuding currently? I was never like that. I never had an enemy in my life until YouTube. There's three standards you follow, so you never have an enemy. You don't do anybody's check. You don't steal from anybody, and you don't talk shit about them. I'm gonna write that down. I came on YouTube and just grown ass men. There's 10 of them, you know, all in their own little ways, just trying to shut me off the internet. 
because I said something to him when I was drunk. Soft skin, snowflakes. <laughs> oh, no, I'm definitely not arguing with you, dude. You're my best friend. <laughs> I just, you know, you're you're always been a cool cat, and I love the Thousand Pound Sisters. <laughs> I guess the word scamly or whatever. What do you think about it? just making an apology video for all the, everything that people think that, that you've done, unless you think that it's just all been uh, misrepresentation and it's all lies? I don't have to prove anything when you know the truth inside your heart and everything. Bad publicity has given me more viewers, so I don't have to apologize to nobody, not my ex-wife, not my son, my dad, my brothers. You know, I look back on my last 25 years of life after getting out of Desert Storm and I don't know, it just seems like all my alcoholism has led to where I am today and I disrespected a lot of people out there on YouTube and stuff and I don't know, either way I... Oh, fuck. This is the last thing I wanted to do on YouTube was say, fuck you, you punk ass bitches. I can't wait for the next five years of trolling. You can't troll me, I'm the troll master. I feel a disturbance in the force. Because I was put on this planet Earth to make people smile. And if you can't handle that, then walk for a mile. Because never judge shoe nice until you walk in his $10 Walmart. Size 13 sneakers. Size 13, do you have a giant penis? Um, you know what they say. <laughs> Not a grower. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned yesterday that I was obsessed with fat people. Do you think I am a, I'm obsessed with fat people? <laughs> Where did I say that? On TikTok? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must have been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I must have been drinking. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no need to apologize. I, I assume you're... You know what? I'm just like yeah. an Andrew Dice Clay had a baby. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. I'm just a raw individual it's a bit, yep. up in the front row mm -hmm. and you said something to me. Hey. And it's derogatory to my life and whatever I'm doing, I'm going to have to rip on you. Right, of course. <laughs> Deserve. Yeah, yeah. Blow for a blow, right? Right. I, I totally understand. I have full total respect for it. So yeah, so that, that's like the, the majority of the, the main the main questions. The biggest thing for me was the Sunny V2 uh, bit because that's like a, a lot of people know you from that now, right? Because that's you like- You can go through Sunny V2's videos and there's all kinds of people he made videos about where he didn't even ask them. Yeah. He just takes reliable sources. It seems to me that Shoe Nice no longer has a positive outlook on the previous people who interviewed him because they get his opinion and then sort of, I don't know about stabbing him in the back particularly, but the story changes and it becomes contrarian after he gets off the show. He plays a bit of a character, acts a bit funny, acts a little crazy, drinks a beer, you know, just got out of an AA meeting, and then they clown on him once he logs off. It's just, it's, it's kind of strange, you know? But Sonny V2, keep the video of you Aussie pencil dick bitch. Internet AJ, you were never the cab driver from Deadpool. And if you were, the cast hated you. <laughs> That's pretty good. And them guys do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You come into the real documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get the info from the source, man, because it's it's so hard to tell from the there's a lot of misinformation on the internet. I've affected people. All my life, dude. Way before the internet, people are just like, don't leave, don't move out, don't quit the job. You're the best worker. You're so funny. Your smile makes me just get up in the morning. And that was just Smart Simpson. I'm yours. Do the dishes, huh? Sorry. <laughs> So, yeah, so you just, the way you talk to your your wife, Marge, there. What do you think of Andrew Tate? Do you know who that is? I need Tate. How come every time I go live on TikTok, people say Andrew Tate? I never even heard of Andrew Tate. What is he, a WWE fighter, drug dealer? He's a bit of a, uh, similar, kind of, yeah. He's a, he's a guy who's blown up recently, and he thinks that women can't drive. Um, things like that. Well, you tell Andrew Tate next time you see him, Damn! Doug's isn't sold at Walmart. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> you Damn! Damn! Tate fans was soft. Common shoe nice W. Another question would be: What's what's something that you've uh, 
that you've eaten or, or drank off camera just on your own time that's just disgusting what, what do you think it was always an entertainment thing dude I yeah, really always never right I, I mean i don't just suck down a bottle of elmer's glue i do pick my skin and eat it um scabs okay. dry just, you know toe skin yeah toe stuff I, I just never threw it on there. Like when I bite my nails, I swallow it. Just chew it up, yeah. Keratin. Well, now, um, have you ever eaten like, uh, like, like uh, sushi or anything like that? Do you like sushi? I like sushi. Sushi. <laughs> I don't do any seafood or not. Nah, it's weird. I will eat a couple sheets of notebook paper before. <laughs> Shrimp cocktail. Interesting. You know. Okay. Okay. One thing that I've that I've always wanted to know too, seeing you drink all this stuff. What is like your state of mind after drinking almost two liters of liquor? What is like the what is going through your head? Um, like what do you think? What are the thoughts? A lot of people already know this, but I immediately turn off the camera and I throw it back up. Okay. Now you've already put it down into your system, so you're going to get drunk, but you're not going to go into that comatose blackout. Right. 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 Hell. Devil Springs, my friends couldn't wake me up, so they brought me to the emergency room. So I decided never to slam liquor again. And I slammed a bottle of Seagram 7, and I went out in public for the first time ever. I bought like 20 hillbillies and four Daytona police officers. Did you win? No. <laughs> Now this story is insane to me. It's so wild and I, I genuinely just don't believe things that are this crazy, but it's incredibly consistent yet again with an interview that he did six years ago on PK. It's the same thing. We can cross reference these stories. I one time I slammed a bottle of liquor and headed out in public and I got arrested on the beach. I don't I, even know how, but I was yeah. fighting like 30 people. He's got the same bits. He's been doing the same bits for forever. Do you think everything is all worth it? Do you think you would do anything differently if you could restart? Final outcome is when I get laid six feet under is I made a million people laugh. I took probably a hundred people off the suicide attempts. I was just that Dr. Phil, Dr. True inside Facebook DMs for years. I really wake up every morning and I just want to make people laugh. So no regrets. Everything happens for a reason and you'll see me someday in the front row and i'll be 70 and i'll be at the mgm grand like don rickles doing stand-up comedy tearing up people in the front audience living on the residency you think you're gonna pull a rodney dangerfield and, and like have like a bath like a bathrobe and then just like expose yourself to the front row like he did when he was older <laughs> Nah, I don't okay. think people have glasses that are that thick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay, so now let's get some more goofier questions. Have you ever worn a dress? Have I ever worn a dress? Yeah. No. How much would it cost to get a cameo done of you in a dress? Has this got a little weird? <laughs> no problem, bro. Just buy the lightning round and I'll twerk for you. Okay, Man. all right. Well, well, I'll hold you to that. Are you tapped into meme culture or do you not give a f***ing shit at all about what people care about in terms of like memes and those things? No, I love it actually. I'm the walking meme. I okay. had Instagram memes that were just amazing. Like, how did your father die? He ate 87 SpongeBob stickers. Okay. You have to go with the generation. I can't right. hang out with people my age and push my YouTube. I gotta go on Snapchat and quick add 5,000 high schoolers. Yeah. Because you don't want them watching Pootie Pie or, you know, Oompaville. Right. You just want them to think that the only thing on YouTube is shoe nuts. Okay. Uh, do you know what bussy is? Bussy? Bussy is butt. Okay. Yeah, have you ever tried bussy? I've done everything, dude. I'm shooting. Sure okay, there we go. Hey, hold on. What did I just submit to? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Twitter? Do you hate Twitter? You're you're a master troll on there. I, I just it, it upsets me when I had like two hundred thousand followers. Just I was huge, and I just the Kardashians, Joe Rogan, Tosh uh -huh. Pino, I know Miley Cyrus and her dad. They all reported me, and yeah. I was just. Oh, Miley Cyrus did. You think Billy Ray Cyrus reported you? Oh, without a doubt. I said, your daughter's a pig like I, Carly. They banged um, Drake and Josh from the Nickelodeon show. <laughs>
What is your obsession with blue? Your your fascination with blue? You are, you've always been surrounded. Is it because of the color of your eyes? You you, you have very yeah, dreamy I eyes. Blue to accentuate my blue eyes. My okay. whole life fed by <laughs> my blue eyes. You know, yeah. I walk up to a DMV lady and I'll be like, I don't have my birth birth certificate. Yeah. They'll be like, Well, you're not gonna. And they fall in love. That's why I don't look people in the eye. It's weird. It's dangerous. What do you think about like Nikocado Avocado and mukbangs? That phenomenon on the on the internet. Um, Nico, I remember him when he first started, but it's just disgusting. It just, it's disgusting. It's just a fat dude sitting around slapping food up against his face. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just asking. Interesting. Yeah. What about just mukbangs in general? What do you feel about that? Uh, that type of content. Have you ever considered getting into the mukbang scene? There's a lot of money in it. You can make a lot of uh, good content. People would watch it. You know what, Oompa? You just gave me so much inspiration to just come back and take my video seriously. I gave up so much being just that drunk troll, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't pay. It doesn't pay. I got to learn how to edit. I got to learn how to have a, you know, a camera view like you. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll actually really give you a tutorial. You know? Well, one thing the kids really like, this would actually do extremely well. Okay, so, can you make this face? It's called the Chad face. Kids love that. By kids, I mean like the young generation. It's like people, if you were to do a mukbang and do that and you start off with your, your Chad face, that would go viral for sure. Obviously, I'm missing some of the trends here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it's it's a it's a bit of a niche one. What's the most bizarre request you've gotten for any comment, cameo, TikTok? What's the craziest thing someone's asked you to do? A guy asked me to sleep with his wife. Did you do it? No, I never did. I can't oh. do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not a freak of nature, dude. Well, I need, dude. I'm a, just a retired combat war veteran with PTSD, TNT, MTV, and a split personality. Sue me. Do you actually have a split personality? Do you have that disorder? Uh, yours. <laughs> Everything's a bit. Everything's a bit. I like it. So a lot of the alcohol, the people, there's a, there, there's a phrase, there's a saying, a euphemism that, that alcohol kills brain cells. I don't know if it's true, but do you think your, your, your mental function has declined over time beyond just age? In the end, dude, I'm just a really good actor like Will Ferrell, John C. Riley, Chris Farley, Robin Williams. Yeah. That's really just all an act. I feed into it because I've been able to feed into it since the fifth grade playground. I know how to piss people off, dude. So in your first video, uh, you mentioned that your dad was hooked. You got you hooked on chronics. Is that all jokes? My father was a pothead. He didn't want good grades from school. He wanted good grade. Screw that SAT. Just bring me home some THC. No ways, just haze. When he wanted us to learn how to read and write, he got us that program hooked on chronics. My parents were so drunk one Easter, we found our baskets hidden in the neighbor's house. So, uh, what is the fallout from the situation? <laughs> Just give me a minute. <laughs> you doing okay? <laughs> What is the fallout uh, in the situation between you and the, the girl that came out in defense of you when people when, when there was the allegations of you grooming? What has the fallout of that situation been like? Not a fallout at all. We're best friends. Her and her husband own a farm in Kentucky. She's on TikTok and anybody can just DM me and I'll give you her TikTok and she can tell you the story about Wheezy and Sonny V2 yeah. being obsessed with her. Being debunked. Okay. So you can sit there, everybody, and realize that Sonny V2 and Internet AJ can't stand me. So they did those rise and fall videos out of spite. And they know the truth, but they won't take the video down. You know why? Because they hate me. And I don't care because it's publicity. And like I always said, Oompaville. My microphone, believe me, I like it loud. I'm the man with the jokes. I could rock the crowd walking down the street to the hardcore beat while my 
humor vibrates the concrete. I'm sorry if you can't understand why I need a microphone inside my hand. Don't mean to offend the citizen, but I kick my jokes way past 10. My story is rough. My neighborhood is tough, but I still sport gold because I'm out to crush. My name is Shoe Nights. I devastate the show, but I couldn't survive without my microphone. Thank you. 